flying already comes with its fair share of stress. So when someone starts causing a ruckus, it only adds to the tension. Whether it's due to alcohol or a sense of entitlement, there's no excuse for behaving in a manner that puts the safety and comfort of others at risk. It's a shame, but there are definitely people who just don't seem to understand this basic idea. Here are five instances when airport Karens got kicked out of the plane. Number five, drunk woman kicked out of flight. At an airport, a situation unfolds that's somewhat common these days. A woman who was looking forward to her flight back to Phoenix finds herself in a pickle. I'm in Phoenix. Okay. I live in Phoenix. All right. And I would like to have my, my flight that I am actually scheduled to yeah. go back to Phoenix. The airline has decided she won't be boarding her flight today due to her intoxicated state. You're not going to go back to Phoenix today. Yeah, of course not. They denied you. Yeah, of course Keep they on. did. Keep on the exits over here. Uh, the exit. The exit. We're leaving okay. the airport. Officials doing their job suggest she should maybe call her family in town. Town, keep going. I do have family okay. in town. Can you call them and have them come pick you up? Um, I can definitely have something arranged. The message is clear, though. She's not flying today. I've been denied flight today. You need okay, to, okay, you need I to, understand I've been okay, denied flight. Okay, let me finish flight. the sentence. Then, then please finish the sentence. You've been denied flight. You need to leave the airport property. You're not a flying... She's no longer considered a passenger. Point. I am not a flying passenger and I need to leave yes, the airport at this time. Okay. Okay. Do you have an Uber or a Lyft? This news seems to catch her off guard. She thought she was on her way out, just following the usual steps to the exit. I do and I will I will open that as soon as I'm allowed to leave, which is what I thought the I was exit doing. Is down here, ma'am. The exit. We're oh, taking it right to the here. exit. But now, she's a bit lost. She knows her way around the airport, sure, but she's puzzled about why she's not allowed to fly. Go yeah, right. yeah, I actually know exactly how to exit this place. I just don't know why I'm not allowed to fly. Because you're... I, I actually, I know why I'm not allowed to fly. It's because... Right here, right here. Go. Do not... As they make their way towards the exit, tension starts to rise. Do not touch me, ma'am. Exit the airport. Don't touch me. Exit the airport. Keep walking. Keep walking. I am walking. Okay. Yeah. Trying to regain some sense of control, she begins filming the encounter. That is wrong. Close on you. Go over here to the escalator. So glad that you can tell me where to go. So glad that you can tell me. Hoping that having video evidence might make a difference. Despite the officer's efforts to escort her without causing any disturbance, she remains uncooperative. Hold on the rail. I don't, I don't Baggage. I don't have Hold any baggage. Hold on to the rail for I me. Don't have any don't. baggage. Pull I don't have any me. baggage. I don't need to go down there. I don't have any baggage. The officials nudge her towards the exit. More. Listen to me. Go you're, outside. You're putting your hands Go on. outside. I am. I'm walking that direction. Okay. Keep I'm going. walking that direction. Keep okay. going. No. 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 Let, let's put it around. The chat turns to how she'll leave. It's hinted that she better sort something out, or things could get more complicated. Are you gonna let me go? Are you gonna call somebody? Which are you going to do? Uber and Lyft is down there. Jail is even mentioned, highlighting how quickly things can go south. Uber or Lyft? Call, call for a ride so you don't have to go to jail. Okay, okay. I, I will do that because I don't need to go to jail because recording... Listen to me. ...people go to jail. You're I, she says her husband is on his way, but the officials need more details. Call him. It's my husband. He's already okay, on the way. Call him. I want to see how far out he is. Well, you don't really get to choose how far... They need to wrap this up quickly. She's given a choice. Go home with her husband or deal with the legal system. I get to choose whether you go to jail or you go home with your husband. So okay, my then choose I go to jail because I have lawyers. Please, 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 and choose You're I go to drunk. jail. Please, please, please choose. When asked to stand up, it dawns on her that she's being arrested. Really want to do that? No, 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 choose that, choose that. Seriously, I have lawyers. Call you your really husband. want to do that, though? No, I don't, but I know that you don't want to do it either, so... Stand up, Sergeant. It's all happening right there in the open. The officials, once just guiding her to the exit, now have to take on a tougher role. You want to go to jail? We'll go to jail. Get your hands. Now in handcuffs, the woman gets worked up and demands to be let go. Uh, that human being that's not, around, that's 
Thank you. Turn me around. Then turn me around. You're not cooperating. You're not cooperating. Since she isn't cooperating, the officers decide to place her in a wheelchair. Fit right up there. Yeah, sure, right there. sure. The officers then discuss the next steps they're going to take and the necessary paperwork that has to be done. Okay. And all three of y'all are going to go down to Southwest Medical Center. Okay. And I'm going to follow Jeez. you. I'm going to follow you with some paperwork. And we're going to see whether that's deemed an exposure or not. Okay. okay. Meanwhile, the woman keeps asking to call her lawyer, hoping for some support in a situation where she feels pretty alone. What do you guys want to do? I just need to call. My lawyer. I have not been able to call my lawyer I yet. No one's allowed me, me to call, call my lawyer. Call Gary. I want to call my lawyer. I want to call my lawyer, please. However, her pleas and frustration fall on deaf ears as the cops ignore her requests. Please, please, let I'll me call be my 10 lawyer. Behind you guys. Okay. I want a lawyer. Uh, I got a bunch of lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. Yeah, so, let me call my lawyer. Sign, you can approve it. Sign this. Despite receiving no acknowledgement from the officers, she continues to ramble on about contacting her lawyer. All I want is to leave the room and be able to make one phone call to a lawyer. One phone call to a lawyer. That's all I want. Please let me call my lawyer. All I want is to call my lawyer. Things start to heat up when she starts insulting the lady officer. My lawyer. She makes things unfair. Her in the room makes things unfair. She is not... ...until she is in a room and you're out of the room they can't shut off. Yeah. Telling her bluntly to get out of the room. Go, go, go. I don't want you in the room. You're... Go. Okay, we're about to... I don't care where you're transferring me to. I already have a lawyer. Okay. Despite her attitude, the officers stay cool and make sure things don't get out of hand. What are you going to do when we take you and put you in that chair? Are you going to fight us? No. Okay. I promise to God I'm not. I've been do. asking you to take me out of these cuffs because they hurt. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put you in that They decide to use a wheelchair to make moving her out easier chair and we're going to wheel you out to his car and from there he's taking you to jail okay, okay i can deal with all of that Perfect. can Perfect. i have my cuffs in front of me please? no no finally she's escorted to a police car no no, 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 no sir if no, you sir. do we have i know i i really wish that you guys had taken me to a bathroom first i really would have liked listen to, to have used the bathroom to for wrapping up her airport drama listen to me okay will you listen to me if you start kicking the windows and stuff, I won't, we have, I won't, we have I to won't, like strap I won't. you down real tight. I promise really I won't. I promise okay. I won't. I promise okay. I won't. Okay. Okay. Here, look, I can stand up and sit in the car with... Number four, woman making a scene in the airport. At Cleveland Hopkins International Airport, a woman captures the attention of not just passers-by, but also the police. With actions that go beyond the pale, she's not just any frustrated traveler. She's causing a real stir. This woman, later accurately identified as Sandra Leroux, is not here for a flight. Instead, she's found yelling at cars and making obscene gestures. Her actions are more than just a minor disturbance. They're enough to draw the police towards her, hoping to address the situation before it escalates further. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Johnson of Ace, I have that female that Ruffin and I had this morning. As the officer tries to engage Sandra in conversation, up on the upper. Let's go. We're on our way to the train, hopefully. Come on, let's go, Susan. Susan, let's go. She brushes it off, keeping her focus forward and pretending not to hear the requests as she walks on. Let's go. Susan, this way. Sandra, clearly not in the mood to cooperate, adds to the tension by continuing to ignore the officer's attempts to communicate. Let's go. That way. Let's go. Let's go. As officers approach, she opts for an unconventional hideout behind the Delta Airlines desk. Let's go. Susan, let's go. Hey, hey, hey. No. Let's go. You can, don't get. You cannot be back here. Let's go. No. Talk about thinking outside the box. It's not your typical spot for a game of hide and seek, especially not in an airport. Let's go. Let's go. I need help, please, right now. Let's what? go. Let's go. But you know what they say. 
Desperate times call for desperate measures, and Sandra takes that to heart. Let go of me. Don't you do it. No. Don't you do it. Let's go. Let's go. Looks like she's not going down without a fight. The officers, known for their training in handling all sorts of situations, find themselves in a peculiar spot with Sandra. She did break skin. Outside the airport premises, awaiting the arrival of the patrol car, Sandra's desperate cries pierce through the surroundings, amplifying the tension. Despite their attempts to guide her and encourage compliance, Sandra remains steadfast in her resistance. All right, come on. Oh my God. Okay. What initially seemed like a routine escort quickly escalates into a physical struggle, putting the officer's expertise in managing unruly individuals to the ultimate test. Finally, after what seems like an eternity, but is probably just a few tense minutes, the officers manage to bring the situation under control. Sandra is handcuffed, a clear sign that the ordeal is over, but the aftermath is felt by everyone involved. Her actions at the airport have serious consequences, leading to her indictment on charges of resisting arrest and assaulting a police officer. Despite these serious accusations, Sandra pleads not guilty, setting the stage for a legal battle that extends beyond the airport's confines. Number 3. Drunk Karen Disrupts Peace Mid-Flight Gets Arrested In a recent incident that catches the attention of many, a couple on a commercial flight finds themselves at the center of a disturbance that leads to their confrontation with law enforcement upon landing. The situation unfolds as the plane descends into Punta Gorda, Florida. That's when the crew reports two passengers causing a commotion fueled by intoxication. The scene at the regional airport is tense, with sheriff's deputies ready to meet the aircraft and address the situation. Witnesses recount seeing the couple, clearly under the influence, engaging in a physical altercation and loud arguments that disrupted the peace aboard the flight. I saw him grab onto her really hard and he was as passengers deplane, the focus shifts to the couple in question. The authorities request identification from the woman involved, marking the beginning of their investigation. Have your uh, ID card, driver's license, something to that What was that? Somewhere, honestly. Okay. You can, yeah, go ahead and find it for, okay. for me. You what? Your ID. Her confusion and inability to locate her ID add to the chaotic atmosphere. I still need your ID. Well, I don't know where it is, so... Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, like what is going on? What happened up there? Her partner, in an attempt to explain the situation, admits to her excessive drinking and apologizes for her actions. She drinks too much. Huh? No, I did not do anything. We're fine. We have people picking us up. I'm sorry for my wife's actions. That's it. Hinting at the underlying issues that contribute to the disruption. The deputies, trying to piece together the events, asked the woman to recount what happened. What, exa what exactly happened between you and him? Nothing. I was arguing with my husband as every oh, day down. we're like, down, down. oh I'm my down. god, don't tell me to calm down. I'm telling her response, however, is clouded by her emotional state as she struggles to articulate the sequence of events and the reason behind their argument. Absolutely, I am. Can I you're hurt you with my aunt? Like, you, let my dogs... You were, you were on a flight, 35,000 feet in the air, okay, with 200 happened? passengers. And you guys are her partner tries to calm her down, signaling his attempt to de-escalate the situation and cooperate with the authorities. Ashley, Anthony. I went to the bathroom. Settle down. Anthony. You don't let her talk to the deputies, you're going to get another call right now. And I don't want that to happen to you. All right, well
Despite the deputy's efforts to understand and resolve the situation calmly, the woman's agitation grows. For you. What is going on? We're not driving. We're not drinking. When there's arguments happening, there's nothing. It's like but the problem my baby is was crying and I yelled at my husband. She questions the nature of the problem, to which the deputies explain the gravity of causing a disturbance on a flight while intoxicated. I mean, well, you committed a disturbance on the flight and you're intoxicated. Somebody yelled at me. Yeah, because you're Somebody yelling at your husband. Somebody yelled at me my baby to sleep. That's what they the explanation seems to do little to soother. Yeah, like well, baby. we're doing an investigation. You're gonna, what you need to do is wait here, apply with my deputies, and everything will go well I'm for you. I'm complaining with your deputies. I'm giving them gonna, everything you need. As she becomes increasingly resistant to the deputies' questions and instructions. We're gonna do what we gotta do. Your paperwork squared away. Where's my grandma's camera? I don't know. Do you have a phone number? Do I have a phone number? Her partner caught between the authorities and her companion's distress, repeatedly apologizes for the situation. I'm sorry. Like, I truly am. I'm completely fine. I told everyone on the airplane that I apologize for my wife for being loud. That's it. Like, I'm sorry. His apologies, however, do little to mitigate the circumstances as the deputies continue their inquiry. So what exactly happened on the flight? Baby, I don't know what you mean. Oh. To be honest, I do not know what you mean. You don't know what I mean? Nothing happened says, between... No. no. Seeking a clear account of the events that transpired on the flight. Well, there you was somebody who like, yelled at me, and I was taking my baby and changed his diaper in the baby room, to be honest. Okay. That was it? I swear to God. They ask if any physical altercation happened between her and her husband, but she flat out denies it. God. Nothing was physical between y'all? No, my God, no. no. Oh my gosh, I promise you, no. I love my husband, no. Are you kidding me? Her husband explains the situation on her wife's behalf. I told her not to drink it. They were like, well, they were all Jack Daniels, and I told them not to, but they gave it to her, and she drank it. I just... It's frustrating. The situation escalates as the woman's emotions run high. She protests, arguing that she did nothing wrong. The authorities inform her of the charges she faces due to her disorderly and intoxicated state. Her partner, witnessing the unfolding drama. Anthony. No, you're not going over there. I just want to tell her so. No, the officers will do that. No, let's not over there. Let's do down. you want to get in trouble? No, oh, man, I, I'm on your side. I, I respect. Expresses his embarrassment and the personal impact of the incident. Okay, that's 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 the woman, still confused about the whole ordeal, questions the police once more about why she's being detained. I promise you, I didn't talk to anybody. Can you please tell me what happened? I'm te I told you what happened. What? Despite the officer's multiple explanations, she still believes she did nothing wrong. Bad enough to where the flight captain had to call the airport to call us I used the restroom and chased my baby's diaper. Like, I literally did nothing. The husband caught in the whirlwind of the situation, attempts to apologize and find a way out for both of them. How's the disturbance on the airline at 30-something thousand feet in the air? I know. Someone's got to answer for that. Hey, I didn't do it. It was almost at a point where they're going to divert the flight. Oh, my God. The officers, however, are quick to remind him of the seriousness of the incident, underscoring that apologies cannot undo the disturbance caused aboard the flight. The police then clarify to the husband that their primary concern is not with him, but with his wife's actions, which have led to this point. Major deal, man. No, I know. So I'm on your side. But to hear from what I've been gathering, from people that have been talking, the issue is not with you. Thank you. Faced with the reality of the situation, the husband asks about the possibility of his wife just receiving a warning for her actions, hoping to avoid immediate arrest. To get arrested, we can just give her a warning. What, what's, no, there ain't no warning for that, buddy. Uh, I apologize for her actions. It's fine. I'm sorry. Bro. It's, I'm so sorry. The officers, however, make it clear that an arrest is necessary, given the nature of the disturbance and her level of intoxication, leaving no room for such alternatives. The woman's inability to find her ID further complicates her interaction with law enforcement. Give me the information. I'm just Give me the information. I'm never gonna f No, I literally have my. Can you look for it? My ID! Still, she insists on her innocence, despite the clear evidence of her disruptive behavior. 
do anything, babe. I didn't say you did. I'm like, what is The whole gonna... airline said you did. Alright, we're gonna... Yeah, because I... Da, da, da. Alright, come on. You're gonna make it worse. Okay. Just be quiet. Anthony. The woman continues to be detained by the officers, while the husband is given the pass to go. As the incident draws to a close, the woman's in-laws arrive to pick up her husband and child. Sorry for my wife's action. It really, I mean, I don't know how far it goes. It's out of your control, so. I'm so no, sorry. It's okay. We'll take care and try to somewhat enjoy your week, all right? The woman starts crying, overwhelmed by the situation. Her emotions spill over as the reality of her actions aboard the flight sinks in. I am trying. Like, what is... I didn't even do anything in that place. She's then arrested for disorderly intoxication. Hey, placed under arrest for disorderly Why? intoxication. Just give me a rest and come back. All right? Yeah, well. The officers proceed to handcuff her, marking a significant turn of events from a mere airport encounter to a legal issue. You're going to go to jail tonight. Yeah, because you're being drunk and disorderly. I'm not. You're kidding, right? Can you my husband? The woman is visibly shaken, struggling to come to terms with a swift change from passenger to detainee. You're going to search her real quick so we can get her out of here. I got one. Well, you can't be on an airline acting this way. Unfortunately, her pleas and protests do nothing to change her situation. An officer takes a moment to interview one of the plane's crew members to gather their account of the incident. Can you tell me what happened today on the plane? Um, we were beginning our descent and I was lead flight attendant, so I was up front. There were two flight attendants in the back. The flight attendants in the back called up and let... The crew member explains that two passengers, a husband and wife, were verbally abusive towards each other during the flight. It was clear to the crew that the couple wasn't entirely sober, which contributed to their disruptive behavior in 30A and C, those are the two in question, in regards to them being verbally aggressive to each other. I could clearly tell like they were not 100% so. Other passengers seated near the couple had noticed their altercation and reported it to the flight attendants. Did it get to the point where their argument was disturbing the peace of the other? There were two passengers across the aisle that said something to the flight attendants, okay. which made the flight attendants want to actually report this. Well, this feedback from fellow passengers played a crucial role in the crew's decision to involve law enforcement. After listening to the crew's account, the officer summarizes and reiterates the key points to ensure clarity. They hear that there is a disturbance going on in the plane. They determine that it was the passengers on 30 A and C. They get a hold of you and tell you to contact law enforcement because... As the process unfolds, the woman is escorted to a police car. Now, if you lean back, there's indentations right here. You put your arms in. Despite the passage of time since the initial incident on the plane, she remains emotional and in disbelief over the unfolding events. Number two, woman's bad jokes get her arrested. At Fort Lauderdale Airport, a woman's carry-on sets off a security alert. The TA steps in, doing their job by checking the bag that beeped through the scanner. What follows, however, turns a standard procedure into a notable event, just not for the reasons anyone would expect. During the routine pat-down, a standard procedure triggered by the alarm, the woman unexpectedly makes a remark about a bomb in her bag. Perhaps she intended it as a joke. A misguided attempt at humor amidst the inconvenience of the search. You just texted her like a thousand times. I said the way y'all searched. Why didn't you say every time? Just calm down, just calm down. Because she, they know, they know, she know that. However, in the highly regulated world of airport security, any mention of explosives is strictly prohibited. TSA agents are rigorously trained to treat every potential threat with the utmost seriousness and they cannot afford to dismiss such statements so lightly. They're like, oh, they missed the bomb in my bag. They missed the bomb in my bag. And I'm like, yo, 
Like, and then there's several passengers that was here as well that heard it. So, I mean, the woman insists there has been a misunderstanding in interpreting her words. Get all this while you pan me down. I have a um, This is a miss. Why would you let me walk away? If that's what I said. Exactly. exactly. Come, like, come on, her ego is good. So, and that's exactly. Right. According to her, she was merely commenting on the thoroughness of the search, not intending to make a serious threat. Also, it's not their job to grab and hold. But no, no, no. But Why you patting me down? You could have stopped the pat down. Yeah, I said I had say a bomb exactly. in my room. Like, you say what I'm saying? So what do you, what do you, so what do you think she heard? However, airports operate under strict protocols, and any mention of bombs, even in jest, is taken with the utmost seriousness. What do you think we got into an argument. Uh -huh. Over the pat down. Not over the pat down, over the lady just coming over there trying to fake the fuse, but you're making it worse because who are you talking to? The TSA agents are bound by duty to act upon her words, regardless of the intent behind them. I don't care. So she going back and forth. We exchange words as I'm walking away. Oh, call them. Da -da 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 -da. Call the police. Oh, call like, yeah, to stop us. Cause so they call in law enforcement to sort things out. They carefully listen to the woman's side of the story, where she earnestly explains that her comment was taken out of context. No. What do you think she heard of you? She, she said that I said I had a bomb. Right. That, and what, I never what, said what that. What did you say during the course of this interaction? And like I said, if y'all searching me because what she did was, oh, start over. Despite her efforts to clarify, the undeniable truth persists. Making bomb jokes at an airport is simply not acceptable and inevitably warrants a serious response. I mean, if y'all was going to find the bomb, y'all would have found it. So that's what you said. It, yeah, because she said I tested positive for explosives. That's well, where it started. Yeah. The hit, the hit oh, the okay. Head. The officer approaches the TSA agent responsible for the recent pat down to gather information on the incident. Well, what, tell me about your, the pat down. I brought her over here, saw her pat down. I was trying to tell her the advisement, so she was cutting me off, saying she don't need to hear it. She's trying to get to her flight. Her the agent recounts the events, noting that the woman subjected to the pat down was somewhat resistant, complicating the process. She was already doing the most. And I was having her on her arm got never like that. She kept moving, talking, so I just had to me to restart the pet down. So I restarted the pet down. As the agent elaborates, it becomes evident that the situation escalated when the woman made a remark about a bomb in her bag. She said it, oh, God, yeah, because they heard her friend kept joking. She was just like, So, and what did you hear her say? Um, we missed the bomb in her bag. <laughs> suggesting that it was overlooked during the search. The police officer, now informed, relays the incident to the sheriff. Now, one says that she heard her say, well, y'all did this and missed the bomb in my bag. Exact words? That's what she said, yes. Is it documented? On, even on a statement? They discuss the woman's behavior and her bomb-related comment, emphasizing the gravity of such statements in a high-security environment like an airport. As tensions rise, things reach a tipping point leading airport security to whisk the woman aside for a serious chat. Here, ma'am, you want to go in the speaking room, right? Okay, I want to stay inside of my bag, though. Y'all yeah. have to take my bag. Yeah. So it's, it's a clear sign that they're not messing around when it comes to keeping things safe. Uh, you can have a seat. Bridge. Coming in. Uh -oh. Despite the back and forth in the side room, the situation doesn't budge much. With strict security rules in play, the woman faces the reality of potential arrest over her comment. What she heard, and you are going to be arrested for that. Arrested for what? A I did not make a threat. That Don't is not make true. A statement though. regarding a bomb in your bag. Naturally, that news sets her off even more. No, I, I did not say it was a bomb in my bag. That's literally play back the cameras. Even when I she didn't even say it was a bomb in my bag. The young lady that did the pat down said that. Then, as if things couldn't get any more intense, she gets an earful about what the TSA agent had to say about her pat down. What she told me was that you said you're all doing this to pat down and you missed the bomb in my bag. No, I did not say that. Why she just didn't say that when y'all came up? She's shocked and quick to deny it swearing up and down that it never happened. I never said I had a bomb in my bag, though. I definitely never said that. And if y'all go through my bag, I, they literally well, we know there's, went through. Listen, we are, you're on the security side. We know there's no bomb. As the discussion unfolds, the police officer gives the woman a firm instruction to stand up, indicating a transition towards more formal proceedings. Stand up for me. 
will take all this will come with you. Go with you, everything will go with you. Just need you to turn around for me. Okay, somebody it's a sobering moment for her as she comes to grips with the seriousness of the situation, realizing that she's on the brink of being arrested. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I gotta get my your... number, my mom's number, my brother number, in case I have to get bonded out. Yes. This ain't true. Then, she's given a rundown of what comes next in the arrest process, laying out the steps ahead. Now, what, what we'll do is once we get you in the car, get you to the office, I gotta get her information anyway. She said she was standing there right next to you and she heard it, so I'm going to get her information anyway. The charge is serious, making a false report about an explosive device in her luggage, a scenario that airport security cannot take lightly. So, what am I being charged with? Uh, I believe, I don't know, the, I have to look at it. It's a, I believe it's a false I'm, threat of a bomb or explosive, false report of a bomb or explosive. The incident ends with the woman being arrested for making a false threat. It's a harsh reminder that words matter especially in places like airports where security is the top priority. Number one, Karen goes into a meltdown over aisle seat change. Jacqueline, a passenger looking forward to her trip to Alaska, encounters a hiccup that's more common than one might think, a seat assignment error. You guys messed so up my what? flight ticket. Hey, what's going on? What's they messed up my flight without, ticket. Without I asked her. for an aisle. They gave me a middle seat. She was expecting an aisle seat but found herself assigned to a middle seat instead. It's a small issue, but for her, it's a big deal. They need to let me either, they need to buy me a hotel ticket and get me back to New York, or they need to let me aboard the plane. Because I already board the plane. The situation starts off simply enough. Jacqueline expresses her dissatisfaction to the airline staff. My behavior? Okay, I got a plane for the aisle seat. They gave me an E, which is a She thought she'd be stretching her legs in an aisle seat, not squeezing into the middle. As the issue escalates, the conversation between Jacqueline and the airline staff goes in circles. She's adamant about the mistake and its impact on her travel plans. Oh, right. see, that is not what I paid ID? for. You have your ID? What does that have to The staff try to handle the situation, but there's no easy solution in sight. Jacqueline explains her side to the officers emphasizing the importance of her trip and how this seat mix-up has thrown a wrench into her plans. They ask for her ID. What do you do with anything? Because right now the police are here, we're going to find out the who, the why, the what, so I just need to know okay, who you are. Okay, we you better. Yeah. To get her information and the help she needs. Okay. All right. Good job. You're not going to be able to tell that's fine. Okay, let's go have a seat right. over there. Let's come over here yeah. so that... Doing their best to find a resolution. So on your side, you requested a seat, you didn't get that seat. And now, that's why I'm trying, like, we're here. Did you walk off the plane? They say, like, let's get off the plane, or are you flying? The officers throw out a couple of options, like staying at a hotel or catching a different flight. But Jacqueline's frustration is hitting its peak by this point. My privilege. Good, it's a okay, thank you. So don't tell me what I cannot and cannot do. No, I would like to hear. Despite the police's attempts to soothe her, she's only getting more worked up. I am allowed to hear what they are saying. Right there, I'm going to catch up with you. Okay. How is that the nice? What have I done? She's really upset about getting booted off the plane, especially since she's adamant that she didn't do anything wrong. What have I done? Now, go with me. You have no idea. They have tried to work with me by taking me off the plane? Jacqueline's not one to take things lying down, so she's pressing the police for answers and demanding to know exactly why she got the boot from her flight. What have I done on the plane? I would like to ask you what I have done on the plane. I listened to your side and I listened to their side. I'm not asking you about my side. I'm as far as she's concerned, there's no way she deserved to be kicked off that flight. What I have done on the plane, did I touch someone? Did so, I touch someone? So what was your name, Please explain it. Have I spoken to someone? Did you, I touch someone? Jacqueline is in the thick of it, passionately making her case to anyone who'll listen. Okay, Please tell me if I've spoken to someone and I've touched someone. Okay, so Listen nine, to him. Three, Let, ask okay. him that question. All right, Jacqueline, we're going to leave. Ask him. She's upset about how things are being handled and isn't shy about letting everyone know. 
Despite the efforts of the police to guide the conversation towards a resolution, Jacqueline isn't on the same page. Ask him if I talk to him. Jacqueline, Jacqueline. You better ask him Jacqueline, if I talk to him. Okay. Listen. You're going to be escorted out. I don't out. live Delta's here. Not I live. It's clear there's a bit of a gap in understanding, making the back and forth more complicated. Financial worries started to weigh heavily on Jacqueline as she brings up the issue of who's going to foot the bill for her ticket. Delta Dude, who's paying for my ticket? You're gonna have to. You got refunded. I got refunded for go. to live in Utah. Yeah, Jacqueline, okay. Even though she's aware that she'll be refunded, she's still visibly upset. We're gonna walk out because I don't are not live here. Passenger. I don't know anyone here. We're if anything, I need to get a now. ride back to New York. We'll walk. Just when things seem like they couldn't get any more tense, the police drop the bomb that she'll have to be escorted out due to the disturbance she's causing. Out to where the other <coughs> airlines are, okay? Dude, I don't live here! Delta is denying you service, okay? Delta Airlines, a private company, is denying you service. Why the It's a tough blow for Jacqueline, adding fuel to an already heated situation. Jacqueline's reactions are intense, to say the least. Because you guys denied me service. Why? You don't even know why. Okay, so you better out. get me a flight back Grab to New bag. York. Okay. I don't live in Utah. Jacqueline, I never Jacqueline. Been Her frustration is evident, and it's clear she's feeling quite a bit of emotional turmoil. The police offer her a solution and other options, but at this point, there's no more reasoning with her. Where am I going to go? I can answer those questions, but we're going to walk No! Out. I don't want to go anywhere! Where am I going to go to Utah? You're going to go to the other airlines and try booking there, okay? A refund is now at the top of her list of demands. Dude, are you going to pay for it? You're refunded, okay? Okay, well then get my refund and refund me a ticket yeah, back yeah, to New York. I don't know it's going to go to your credit card. I okay, well that's card. on you. Jacqueline feels like she's being left out in the cold by the airline a sentiment that adds a sense of urgency to her pleas for help. Jacqueline, you go. cannot do that! Hey, Jacqueline? You know how They are leaving me homeless! Hey, They're leaving me camera. homeless! Jacqueline. The police, trying to keep the situation under control, suggest it's time to leave the area. Okay, we're gonna walk you out. Right walk now, me out to open, where? To where you can To the lobby in Utah! At this point... I don't live in Utah! Warnings from the police about the potential for charges if the yelling continues add a layer of gravity to the conversation. You to go get rebooked. You keep doing this yelling, we're gonna look at criminal charges, okay? Disorderly conduct. Dude, is, this is on you though! This is not on me, okay? Jacqueline's frustration is still evident, but now there's the added pressure of potential legal consequences. Things take a serious turn when the police tell the woman she's caused enough of a scene that the airline had to stop boarding the plane. You. Caused a disturbance. They have deplaned. No, a I did not cause a disturbance. Jacqueline, they told me I would get an aisle. Jacqueline, Iowa. Jacqueline. All right, dude. with Jacqueline's behavior showing no signs of improvement, the officers make the decision to handcuff her. Give me my. I don't okay. do. Let's go. Stop. Hands behind your back. Stop. Hands behind your back. Now. Stop. Hands behind your back. Stop. Hands behind your back. She can't believe it's happening and tries to resist making it clear she's not going down without a fight. In the end, she finds herself handcuffed and under arrest. It's a pretty intense end to what started as a complaint about a seat. Had she just taken the middle one, she might have been admiring Alaska's scenery by this point. Instead, it looks like she's in for a different kind of scenery behind bars. So there you have it, the top contenders for the title of the most obnoxious Karens who got the boot from the plane. Honestly, I'd rather not be on the same flight as someone who loses it over a seat change. Who needs that drama before takeoff, am I right? How about you? Got a favorite case from the bunch? Also, check out our other stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. See you next time.